<laughs> the whole church world needs a reset. <laughs> we are going to get back to the apostolic times. And it's now. I'm not talking about the future. Now. <laughs> you want to say something? Yes. Sir, um, there was something uh, this man said in the book that... The reprint, yeah. Yes, he hasn't left me. He, he said, either him or Franklin Hall, he said the three most developed, spiritually developed people in the Bible who did the most powerful things you saw in the Bible were people who fasted up to 40 days. That is Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Jesus. Or we should put Jesus first. Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. You saw that particular fire mount retreat eh? on Mount Oliver. Did you notice that three of them appeared there? Mm. Mm -hmm. when, when, yeah. Mm. These are men that have gone, but they are still appearing. Till today, three of them, you can't find their bodies. You can't find Elijah's body. He took him to heaven. You can't find Moses' bodies. And Jamaica was asked to come and get him. The scripture say he died, but nobody has seen his body. There are those who think he actually went like Elijah too. There are those who actually think that he actually died, but they took his body and transmuted it. Of course, our Lord Jesus, you know what happened. A conquered death came out. There's another man that belonged to that class. Yes. They, they, they normally don't add him to that because the Bible did not have his record, the full record inside the Bible, except some Bibles. Some Bibles have it. I have a copy of the Bible that has his book. His name is Enoch. The book of Enoch is part of the Bible, my friends. <laughs> it's actually the first book of the Bible. I have a Bible that has it. Yeah. If you have the Bible that they use in the Middle East, the Eastern part of Christianity, that's where Christianity came from. It didn't come from Africa or from America. <laughs> if you have the, the Bible they were all using, it has that book inside it. Buy a copy of it. Any of the Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox Bible, it has it. Yeah. So Enoch was the first to do that. He too. Mm. One time, he finished having a supernatural encounter with her. When he came, nobody could, for weeks, nobody could look at his face. You notice it happened to Jesus at the Mount of Transgression. Nobody could look at You notice it happened to Moses. I'm going to be leading another fast in the middle of the year. That one will go much further. I'm trying to train beginners and train some of us so now we're talking about three days to one week. And then, you know, I'm giving them option of 21 days, um, uh, Daniel fast, and then 30 days where some break in the evening. There are four types of fast. Maybe I should talk to you about it. There are four types of fast. The first type of fast is intermittent fast. Here you just fast for some hours. There are more to it, or for example, those who use it for health values, you just fast for some hours in a day. And it, there is a way you schedule it. I don't want to spend time on that because intermittent fast is intro fast, introduction to fasting. That's what you used to start drawing people to teach people abstinence and self-denial. So an example is our normal six to six in the evening. That's eating one meal a day by six in the evening. Some people eat more than one. So some people do in a 24 hour window they do 
if you remove six from 24, it's about 18 hours. They do six, 18 um, type of intermittent fast. 18 is when they abstain. Within the six hour window is when they eat. Some people do 420 within a four hour window. There are different ways people organize themselves. There are people who fast six in the morning till four, six to three. Or children sometimes, or people who are unhealthy sometimes start with just skipping breakfast, six to 12. So that's introduction to fasting. That's not the ones I'm dealing with here. The only reason I mentioned it is if you have certain health challenges that will probably not allow you to do some of the things we are recommending, uh, that is a good one for you. Let me give you an example. Somebody with diabetes cannot go off completely, so they don't go into a shock. So even if they want to fast, they have to find a way at a certain period to put glucose or whatever into their system to keep Keep it balanced. There are those who chew biscuits. There are those who... But of course, real fasting will destroy that. Oh, yes. So, the second type is a partial fast. A partial fast is also called Daniel fast. Uh, Daniel chapter 10 from verse 1. Please put it verse 1 to 3. Partial fast. You see what it looks like. I'll just give you an example. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Bashesa. And um, if you notice, this partial fast was used to resolve, to tap into revelation, to break into People who need to make some critical decisions or have the Bible open up. The spirit of that book will come on you and start opening your eyes and you start getting the author's interpretation. Because it's God's word. The Holy Spirit that authored it, though he used people, <laughs> will start, will come upon you. Your eyes will open. Books like the book of Daniel, book of Revelation, a lot of people uh, stru struggle to understand those books. But while I was fasting, they were open to me and they were like normal books. And sometimes I see how people struggle to understand it and I really wonder. <laughs> I realize that that's how it used to be too. <laughs> It was revealed to Daniel, but the time appointed was long, and he understood that and had understanding of the vision. The people have, you know, God trying to reach them, and it's not working. They're not getting it, going to a fast. Pasha fast can even help you do that. He did this for, go ahead to verse 2, for 21 days. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Three. Verse 3. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh or wine into my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three full weeks were fulfilled. Okay, let's look at the three components he mentioned here. One, all this uh, fast food, baked food, uh, flour-based food, bread, snacks, and the rest of them, you know, Eliminated. Two, all types of meat. Eliminated. He didn't say I was eating uh, white meat. He said no meat came into my mouth. Eliminated. Then, of course, wine and drinks. Eliminated. 
Then he also talked about his personal grooming. In New Testament, we are taught that when you are fasting, dress up well. I don't mean fashion. I mean, don't look gloomy, downcast, like so that people will now know that you are fasting. You want to advertise. Don't do that. But at the same time, you might have to get rid of this excessive obsession with personal grooming in terms of fashion. Want to wear the latest cologne, all those extras, get rid of them. You are in a time of mourning. Did you see the word he used in verse 2? I mourn for three full weeks. Fasting is a time of humbling oneself. It's also a time of repentance. It's a time of consecration. It's a time of sanctification. Apart from the fact that you might be seeking for some breakthroughs. And then, of course, uh, some people stay away from all types of cooked food. In Daniel chapter 1, the guy explained to us how he does this partial fast. He stays on vegetables and fruits. Yes. 21 days. Vegetables and fruits. Why don't you go to chapter 1 and show them when Daniel and his friends were beginning, like verse 8 to 10, you will see what he, he did there. Verse 8, Daniel proposing his heart that he will not defy himself with a portion of the king's meat. These are very rich man's food that they give them because they are walking in. They are now in government house. He said, no way. Nor with the wine which they drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not defy himself. Another problem here is that some of these things are offered to idols. As Jews, they were taught not to eat such things. But then these are very rich, tasty food. It will be hard to say no to such things. With, with his three friends, they started as young men to pay this kind of price. That's when they, they developed the fasting lifestyle. Verse 9, and you will see what he did for him. Now God brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the princes of the universe. Verse 10, and the princes of the Enoch said to Daniel, I fear that my Lord the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink, for why will he see your faces worse than the children which are your sword, that is your colleagues. And then you will make, endanger my head to the king. If the king sees you emaciated, you lose weight, looking somehow, the guy is going to cut off my head. You know, that's how they do it in those days. Now, his understanding is that fasting will make Daniel look worse, you know, you know look unhealthy. And the king will start asking, what's wrong with these three boys or four, or four Hebrew children? And then he will find out that they are not eating he was asked, why? And the butler's head will be taken off. He said, no, 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 no. But Daniel now explains something to him. Fasting doesn't, partial fast, this type. It doesn't make you look. You lose weight, but you look finer. You will glow. Your skin will start glowing. The wrinkles will vanish. <laughs> Some of the gray hair will reduce. <laughs> Health challenges in your body will vanish. Your strength will be restored. This is one of the type of fasts you do for health reasons, but for also spiritual reasons. You can see the thing opens the, the, the spiritual realm. You will see what he did for them. Verse 11. Then Daniel said to him, to the knock that was set over them, yes, verse 12. He said, prove your servant, I beseech you for 10 days. Let's just try for 10 days. If it's working, then you can allow us to continue. For 10 days, let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. You see? Vegetables. Give me another translation of verse 12. Please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. That's partial fast. So, this is better than the intermittent where in the evening you load Pandediam, you load, you load Gary and all of that. So for, for 21 days or 30 days, you just go fruits, vegetables. Let's see the result, verse, verse 13. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food 
and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. Then verse 14. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. Verse 15. At the end of the 10 days, they look healthier, better nourished than any of the young men who were eating the royal food. <laughs> you want to renew your youth? Some of you will lose 10 years. <laughs> Some of you will shed off, you know, 12 years. Some of you will come back to how you used to be when you were at your prime. Here is a secret. <laughs> this is not storytelling. This is what some of us have proven. Okay, let's leave the physical health value and go to the spiritual. Then uh, verse 17. To these four young men, God gave them knowledge, understanding, of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. He poured prophetic gifts on them. So, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, plus something happened to their intellectual capacity. Something happens to brain, your brain power, to your intellectual power when you fast, because uh, this is what I've proven. You break into realms. Then even in your career, in your academic work, you have higher capacity to understand. You unlock divine intelligence. Your subconscious and superconscious mind awakens. You are ability to retain, your ability to assimilate. One of the things I've learned, I learned it the hard way. When I'm fasting, I don't listen to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I don't know about you, but I don't take on news, I don't, I don't take on TV, I don't do entertainment. I actually, it's part of the requirement of the scripture. Isaiah 58 said, when you fast, don't go after your own pleasure. You know those things, your normal enjoyment, stay away from them. If not, you are neutralizing the fast. But by experience, because I was on a fast and then I watch one or two things. What I have noticed, they enter inside my spirit. It's not just in my mind. Normally when I take on information, it stops here. They get inside my subconscious. And it becomes hard for some days to get rid of. Because fasting opens up the subconscious mind. The superconscious mind. There is this intelligence, this one you carry upstairs, is not all there is to a human being. There is even a God conscious mind. There is a super intelligence inside you. God put it under and subdued it after man fell. There is creativity. There is ingenuity. You are actually made like God. You are made in the image of God. You are capable of so much more than you know. Oh, this one I, I finished reading, I've forgotten. You don't know. Fasting will clear up a lot of those junks. You know, fasting brings you in contact with the Holy Spirit. And you know one of the things the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things and he will bring to your remembrance the things you've been. He will open up the hard disk and start unlocking resources of wisdom. So I'm very careful when I'm fasting the things, because things you ingest go down. It doesn't just stop with the mind, it goes down to the subconscious, to your spirit. You have to be very careful about that. And so, the heavenlies unlock, spiritual gifts unlock, visions and revelation, you know, all kinds of innovative gifts and so on unlock. If I tell you the things I've experienced, it's all, you know, one thing is to read the Bible, another thing is to walk into the experience, to enter into experiential knowledge. God has given me direction on all kinds of things. Business decisions, financial decisions, construction, even things that have to do with construction. That I had a group of professionals like architects and engineers working for me on a site, and it was during, during a fast. Every, every morning I, I, I see things that are not able to bother the professional. And when I come and tell them, I, say, I send them a message early in the morning. They say, oh, sorry, sir. 
That's actually what should have been done. And they are making all the mistakes. And you know why? Sometimes they don't have time to think. They are busy with the activity of work. And I'll tell them that I said, you know, and they, will, and they will tell you, this is actually the professional, even health issues. One time we told the doctor, you're not supposed to give this kind of drugs. I said, I want to know if I'm right or wrong. He said, that's actually true. He said, this is dangerous. Somebody could have died over this. I said, but why did you do that? Prescribe a dangerous drug for a pregnant woman. What the Bible said is that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, all things, all things. And bring to your remembrance, like students, or people who are still writing exams, and they have a lot of things on there, and they forget. Fasting will clear up your mind. These guys, these boys, Daniel and his three friends, the Bible said at the end of the training they went for in Babylon, they were found ten times better than all the people in their generation, in their classmates, all the magicians, all the astrologers. What was the secret? Fasting, partial fast. And this is good for people who are, you know, pursuing intellectual activities, academic activities, because you get the food you need to function. You get the energy you need to function, but you avoid all the sugar and all these things that are constantly destroying people's health. All these things that are poisoning our bodies. What people do is that they go on vegetarian diets when they do partial fast. F for that period. And partial fast sometimes is juice fast. They, you know, make juice and drink it. And they don't even, they don't eat throughout the period. But the difference now is that they don't have to wait till six in the evening. Probably they are walking while they are fasting. They can drink their juice in the afternoon, drink in the evening, and just go on and do their work. They get natural things and blend them. And with this type of fast, after 21 days, there was the Prince of Persia, the power, the principality that was ruling over the region collapsed because of one man's prayer or maybe three people's prayer four people's prayer so when it comes to opening up our intellectual faculties and breaking into spiritual gifts revelation gifts this is very very making decision getting direction Lord what do I do about this I need clarity this is it And of course, the third type of fast is water fast. Uh, <laughs> um, this is the Jesus fast. This is what Jesus did. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Uh, A water fast is actually the most effective type of fasting. It's the most effective. Three days to one week of that can give you far that's what it would do for your health and do for your spiritual life is beyond what I can discuss here. Addictions will break. Health and toxins in the body will be excreted. Health problems will be resolved. Bondage to pornography, bondage to, to demonic activity, bondage to sexual, uh, we break. Bond, uh, alcohol, cigarette, and, and drug addiction breaks. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take note of what I'm saying. 
<laughs> in the retreat we just came from, we, we, one particular day, people addicted to different things were breaking. There's one now, and he's a pastor. He's one of our pastors in New York. He said, immorality, his own problem. He broke. And he was telling me, he said, I have tested myself after this. You taught this. I've subjected myself to test. I have not had any problem with loss or job, messing around with women all these years. He traveled to Germany, stayed in Germany, pursued a course, two years, came back. He said, even in white man's land, I did it. See, that's how. I can even call his name. Then in this year's retreat, this particular year, this January, the one that just passed, different people, different types of addiction, they broke just within three to five days. You do water fast, is the most beneficial type of fast. Just drink water. Your body will be renewed. All kinds of things will happen. And then this is the one especially that is done for spiritual power. Oh yes, and for spiritual authority. And for revival, people who want to break into a new realm of spiritual experiences. All the other ones have different levels of delivery. Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness or desert. Verse 2, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. In those days, he ate nothing during those days. He didn't say he drank nothing. If you check it in Matthew 4, and at the end of it, he was hungry. He was not tested. Notice that. And I think Jesus said this example for our sake. I don't recommend fasting without water, except you're just doing one day fast, because I'm going to talk about dry fast. That's the last type of fast. If it's just one day, dry fast can do very well. And if you push dry fast, maximum three days. If you take it beyond three days, you will get yourself harmed. You will harm yourself. It will. You might be making progress spiritually, but you will be damaging your health. Some medical professionals recommend dry fast, maybe for a day or two, you know because it, it, it has an additional benefit when it comes to burning fat, fat particularly. It burns it faster. But water fast does that. And then water fast has an advantage that it helps you to flush out all of those things. So here in Dominion City, we always look for a way people can gain not just spiritually, but physically. You gain because your spirit lives in a body. You don't destroy the body. You have a water in a glass. You destroy the glass. Water will pay away. You go to heaven and meet God. So we don't recommend excess. And I'm going to say this because people, are, you are listening from all over the world, from different places, because there are people bent on excesses. There are people, we don't do that. Wisdom is profitable to direct. And I have done dry fast or, or of <laughs> different types, but I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> when you finish, you come out, people will wonder what happened to you. You'll be looking much older, looking, you know, famished, looking all that. What's the use? When you can achieve the same thing and look younger,
So during these 40 days, he ate nothing. That Jesus, that's what Jesus did. There, there, uh, there was a man who did um, drive fast and took it beyond, you know, three days. He actually took it to 40 days. His name is Moses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some years ago, I read that record, you know. I don't know whether I should show it to you or not, but I read that record in, it's put there for us twice in the book of Exodus. Exodus 34 was also put there. Exodus 34 was when he did it the second time. If you actually add the two, it's like 80 days. But there was a gap between the two fasts anyway. So it's not 80 days fast, 40 days fast twice. He did the first one, got the table of stone. When he came down, the people made a golden calf. He broke the table of stone. By the time they finished dealing with what just happened, he had to go back to God to get that table of stone. He broke it in anger. God said, another 40 days fast. That's what it will take you. Before you finish writing all the things I'm giving you, 40 days were passed. Anyway, he did that. So, some years ago, I was still a very young Christian, and I, I, I used to fast a lot, and I told myself, I think I need to do like Moses. Thank God there was an elderly person around who knew what I was, and then had to correct me. He said, you will join them in heaven if you, if you try that. We'll come and carry your body and bear it. Because a man can live 40 days without food, three days without water, one day without hope, but he cannot venture beyond more days without water. I hope you know what leads to suicide. Once they, a, a man looks at it, he can't see any other, that's when life ends. That's why even if you are not able to help somebody get healed, help somebody get a breakthrough, just help him keep hope alive. You can keep him. A living dog is better than a dead lion. But when you introduce things like fasting, things like faith, then breakthrough is going to occur. Changes will occur. So it's not just being alive, hoping. This one, definite results will follow. So of course, the last one is dry fast. And, um, you know, um, in... Most places where it's done in the Bible is one day. Especially to avert judgment. Somebody has done something wrong and he wants to repent. He's not just God, sorry. Oh. He knew that some consequences will follow this. Drive us. It's called chastising myself. You want God's punishment to be lifted. Yeah, you, you put yourself through some discipline, through a process of repentance and show God that you're still. That thing lifts. The judgment is averted. Uh, there are many cases on that. First Kings chapter 21, verse 27. Let me show you. This is where a prophet of God, and this is a prophet, once he says something because he's an authentic prophet, it comes to pass. His name is Elijah. He went to a very wicked king. First King 21 from verse 27. A wicked king by the name of Ahab and pronounced judgment. You're going to die. This one will happen. This one will happen. Watch what happened. Read from verse 27. And it came to pass when Ahab heard those words that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. So usually you, you use this to humble your soul. You can also use water fast to do the same thing. Humble your soul to pursue repentance and to bring change to your own personal life. This is to correct issues. 
moral issues, sinful issues. Not just, Lord, I'm sorry, oh, and tomorrow you are back in the same mess. No, 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 no. If you truly want to change, this is how it is done. And then to prevent judgment. Especially when people know something has gone wrong and is bringing judgment on my life. His consequences are coming. This is, yes, go ahead. And verse 28. 28. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbled himself before me? Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. So the, the punishment was lifted to future generations. What if somebody teaches the future generation? They can push it again. If you see what this man and his wife Jezebel did, that's one person God shouldn't forgive. But you see, her fasting with humility, humbling. And fasting is the way to humble your soul. And her repentance, God lifted the, cause, the judgment. You know, let me give you another example of that. You know, in Jonah chapter 3, that case of Jonah, uh, we, we studied it the other time. The, the prophet Jonah declared that in 40 days the city of Nineveh will be destroyed. Show them verse 2. So, 40 days, somebody, a whole nation will be destroyed. Yes, verse 3. So, Jonah arose, went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Then, verse 4. Yeah. Yes. And Jonah it. began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So this is also done apart from averting judgment when people really need desperate, they are in desperate situation in crisis. They want to. One day to three days, they turn away from water. They turn away from food. They don't want anything at all. There, I, I, I will even tell you, there is soft version of it. There is hard version of dry fast. Because in the soft version, you can still let your skin absorb water. When you take your bath, when you wash your hand, wash your face. The, the hard version, they don't touch water at all. They don't bath. Those three days, they don't. They are even those who refuse to brush their mouths. They just stay locked away somewhere. They don't near food. They don't even cook for another. They just stay away. They don't want to smell. A desperate situation, life and death issues, and all kinds of things. And usually, they bring it with humility, with repentance, it breaks it, will always break it. 40 days, a nation will be destroyed. Uh, what happened? What did these people do? So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Verse 6. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Verse 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, test anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Do you see it? No food, no water. This time they included animals, human beings, and animals. Of course, you know, if that war or natural disaster were to hit, those animals will still die. So the king humbled himself, came down from his throne, sat on the floor to show humility, put on a circle, remove all the robes, all these royal robes. That's part of what I was saying in the beginning. You know, all this fashion, the, all this whatever, you have to be on cologne. Your nails must be like the eagles for you to come out. No, no, if I don't have makeup, four layers of makeup, I cannot come out to 
My friend, you are not serious. When you are ready to fast, you will leave those things behind. Some of you won't remember Saloon. Not when a desperate situation is around. Some of you will remember Colons. Now, Jesus said, of course, some basic things like if you're going to walk or you're going to meet people, you can't go out there and not brush your mouth. If you're going to walk, you have to put on your roll-on and other. don't go around smelling. But these are situations where people can afford maybe to sit down in one place, sit in their house or whatever. If you have that, you can do whatever you want to do. But if you're going to go out and interact with people and brush your mouth, take your bath, go out. You know, don't let anybody know that you're fasting. Go there, smile, and do what you have to do. It's tougher for people whose work are tedious. There are some type of fast that dish is not recommended that they are doing. Water fast uh, for a few days, yes, but uh, vegetable fast for longer days. If you are doing some work that is strenuous on your body because they need the basic energy to still get their job done. So you can imagine someone like Daniel who was a prime minister and was fasting for 21 days. So that was what he did to be able to keep that and keep his job. The king caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout the universe by the decree of the king and his noble saying, let neither man nor beast nor head nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Actually, you know, at verse 8. Verse 8. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. That's one of the things I've noticed with Nigerian Christianity. You, 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 people fast in January, but they don't recommend some of these important principles. That fasting must go with humility, humbling of yourself and must go with turning away repentance. That's why people don't get what they are looking for. You cannot be fasting and still be committing all kinds of atrocities and be into violence. This is one of the sins that city was known for. Violence and bloodshed and oppression. The king, everybody must turn for. If we do this in Nigeria added with repentance and humility, we will have a brand new country in three days old. But we do religious fast without any repentance, without any change. And that is exactly what happened. God spared that nation. And a major revival that lasted for 200 and something years a new season. Instead of destruction, a new season. That's how to fast, to change history, to turn around circumstances, impossible situation. I'll give you one more example and then I probably will stop with it. Esther chapter 4 from verse 16. Now, genocide, a decree has been passed to wipe out the Jewish people. It's like what Hitler did, the first Hitler to try, that was Herman was a man in authority. He walked with the king and the passage decree that uh, all Jews will be annihilated from the face of the earth. When that decree has been signed into law, hmm, Esther heard it. Look at what, what happened, yes? So Esther said, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast for me and neither eat nor drink three days. Did you see that? No food, no water, three days. Night or day. I also am my... No breaking in the evening, no. And then, yeah, in this kind of fast, you don't do that. This type is a desperate... I say, you are going to die. Genocide. It's an emergency. And sometimes it could be... They've given you three days to live. It might be doctors. Now, if it's a health challenge, I won't tell you to remove water. It's good that you can add water. Drink only water. But here, Esther said, neither eat nor drink for three days. That's the maximum number I have seen dry fast. That is called total fast in the Bible. That's 
except the Moses situation that I was talking about. That elderly man now came to meet me. He said, I heard you want to do whatever for copy Moses. I said, yes, sir. He said, we will come to get your body because you will join Moses and others in heaven. I said, but it's in the Bible that a human being, is not a human being like me. He said, if you meet the condition under which he did it, you can do it. Do it under the glory crowd. The glory crowd covered the mountain. He went inside it. He said, because in that state, your physical whatever functions of your body are suspended. You are living like in a supernatural state. The woman was even preaching and the glory of God descended and she froze with her hand lifted up for days. So nobody's talking about eating or drinking. She froze like this under the glory of God for days. All the functioning of her body stopped, including her mind. After three days, the thing lifted from her. She continued the message she was preaching from where she stopped and continued. Of course, what happened is that within that three days, the news went that people, more, the crowd has tripled. People went, the thing went, because the move of God broke out everywhere. It's a revival. Healings, miracles. People went out in town. They were bringing people on wage. So by the time, I and mean, then they were sat there waiting for her. She stood there, frozen. Those who tried to help her, they found her they couldn't. She was frozen. At the end of the third day, she continued the message from where she stopped. It was after they were telling her, she thought she just blinked an eye and continued. She continued the message. She didn't, it's not even like I'm breaking a fast. She didn't even know that she had fasted or done anything. If you stay under that kind of whatever, then you can try such a thing. Go and read the record. The glory of God was, was there and God himself was there. You can imagine what was flowing out of his presence. For when Moses even came down from the mountain, he wasn't even asking, give me water, please. I've been fasting. No, no, no. It wasn't like that. I read Enoch's own case study. He came from the experience he finished. His face was shining. They couldn't come near him, just like Moses. And then his children, Methuselah, they begged him to give him food and what He said, all oh, earthly appetites are gone. I don't have any such. For another 30 days, he didn't eat. He didn't have appetite. He didn't have. Okay, they said, let's make you venison so that you can bless and pass some of it. He said, I will bless you. I've accepted what you're offering, but I don't have appetite for anything earthly. Oh, yes. There is a place you cross after the first three days in fasting, like whatever. You lose appetite. All this hunger that is disturbing you will vanish and you'll be stronger. You know, some, sometimes when you start the fast, you have headache, you have dizziness, you are weak. All of them will vanish. It's just gravity that was put there to hold human beings in the flesh. Three days is what it takes to break through it. Your plane will break into the other realm and you're a free human being. And then you, you conquer addiction, food addiction, because you don't know how addicted we are to food. Then other types of addiction will start breaking as you move forward from sex, sexual addiction, then to this issue of pride and our ego. You want to... You want to conquer pride? Some of you don't know how prideful you are. It's when you are corrected. It's when you rebook. You, the, the thing is that you will show. <laughs> Some when they are giving instruction, the, the, <laughs> the peacock will rise up. That's how it is. These are the things that hold us in the flesh. Check the three temptations Jesus faced when he was fasting. The loss of the flesh, Appetites of the body, from the one for food to sex, the loss of the eye, which is greed, money, acquisition. You buy this one, you want the next one. You buy this one, you want the next one. And the pride of life. Yes, stubbornness, pride, rebellion. They will break. 
you become a sanctified human being. That's what fasting, the first thing it does is to actually change you. Fasting does not change God, it changes you. But it moves the hand of God. So Esther said, you fast for me, I also and my maidens will fast likewise. The same way. No food, no water, three days. So I will go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. If I perish, I perish. Anyway, um, you know, that decree was reversed. And then the, the table turned and the Jews had victory over their enemies. It doesn't matter the kind of desperate situation you're facing this year. A one day total fast, dry fast to three days. I recommend water even for your three days. But people can do dry up to three days. Then longer fast, three to seven days, three to five to seven days, but water. And then longer ones you start moving into higher dimensions. Three to f seven days, what I recommend for now. You want to do much longer, I recommend like partial fast like Daniel, two to one days. Can you do two to one days only water? Beautiful, great, you can. Can you do 40 days only water? Yes. But the Bible said Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Be led of the Spirit and be guided by knowledge, by wisdom. Don't just be reckless. I want to give some guideline as we begin to conclude. <laughs> if you want to fast, do these three things. Number one, decide the purpose the reason why you are fasting and write it down. What is the goal? What do you want to achieve with the fast? Because here we are talking about consecrated fast, not just fasting to lose weight. But if you are just fasting to lose weight, also make it clear what you are trying to do. Consecrated fast is fasting for spiritual reasons. Fasting, fasting, consecrating a fast unto God, that means it will go beyond the physical benefits you want to achieve some major things in your life so that's what i'm recommending this january anybody can always fast to lose weight and all that but if you're doing a consecrated fast you also lose weight you will gain physical set the goal is write it down what it is that you want to achieve and have it clear on paper two decide the type of fast you want to engage in and the duration how long once you decided it is three days it's seven days it's 21 days and the type of fast this one is vegetable fast partial fast or this one is water fast what i need now requires water fast i'm not doing vegetable then commit yourself to it and don't break it. And if you do, for any reason, break it, add more days to balance back what you have lost. Make sure you accomplish it. I always recommend that you find an environment that will support you. That's not my next instruction. There are three, remember, because I'm going to give you two additional advice, but the three instructions are the basic one. You decide the goal, set the goal, and write it down. Then consecrate that first by first deciding what type and the duration. Then make commitment to that. That's commit. 
that you're going to do this and commit and you're not going to break it. And if you do, add whatever it takes to balance it back. In other words, if you have made a mistake along the way, don't stop. Continue. Go back. But add whatever it takes to help you accomplish that. Okay. The third instruction is once you start a fast, the devil will come to fight you if it's a consecrated fast. He doesn't want people to move beyond the carnal level. He doesn't want people to break into the supernatural. He, he hates that. So you can see when Jesus started, he came. He would tempt you. He would try different things. And then when you start a fast, your flesh will fight you. You see how spoiled that your body is, that your flesh is. You see how overpampered it is. It will come up. So this is what you do. You ask the Holy Spirit for grace, for the enablement to help you finish this fast successfully. If you would do this, you will see results. Like this week now, starting from tomorrow, I'm leading a group of people on a seven days fast. Then, of course, get the books. When you are fasting, get these books. I think there are about five books recommended. Fasting, the Atomic Power of God by Franklin Hall. 80 reasons or 80 benefits of fasting by the same author. Then uh, Derek Prince, fasting, the key to releasing the power. God's power in your life by Derek Prince. It's a small book. These are small, small books. Like, look at fasting, the atomic power of God. So you can easily get them. Then, um, where is the Kenny Hagen on, on the art of prayer by Kenny Hagen? Yeah, look at it. You can order it, Google it, or, you know, order it, look at bookshops where you are. And then, the intercessor by Liz Howell. Liz Howell. L-E-E-Z Howells, H-O-W-E-L-S. Liz Howells, the intercessor. Get those books. You won't be the same. You will not be the same again. You will be reading them while you're fasting. Start with the fasting books, the three small books. Especially the Atomic Power of God. And then the Derek Prince book. I'm going to do something right now, both at home and here in this auditorium. People who want to go into a consecrated fast this coming week, maybe you want to join us or whatever, or you want to go into any form of consecrated fast, and you want the grace of God, the help of the Holy Spirit to rest on you, to help you, just lift up your hands, and I'm going to pray for you. There will be a supernatural help. The power to live the Christian life is the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's not just a grace for fasting, for abstinence. There is also the grace for prayer and supplication. At home, you want that. Just lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for what you have shared with us this morning. Now, let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon everyone that is lifting their hands. And all those from around the world, wherever they may be in their homes, wherever they are watching from, who are connecting. And those that will connect after. Let that anointing, let that grace, let that supernatural enablement come upon them. Jesus was able to go all the way to 40 days because the Holy Spirit first came upon him. There is an enablement that will enable us to conquer the flesh and to conquer the enemy. I ask for that enablement to come upon every one of them and let the spirit of prayer and supplication rest upon them. Let them accomplish tremendous things during this season. Benefits in their physical lives and health, tremendous breakthroughs and benefit in the spiritual life and let them emerge out of it clothed with the glory and the power of God and a new level of victory. We thank you for it. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are here or you are at home. You have not given your life to Christ. Or maybe you backslidden at any point. You want to, you know, consecrate your life back to him. Just put your hands on your chest and I'm going to pray for you. Say this with me. Jesus, thank you for your word and the truth that you have brought to me today. Thank you for the clarity that has come. Now, Lord, I repent of my sins. I repent of the way I've lived my life. And I ask you to forgive me and wash me with the blood of Jesus Christ. I give you my life. I surrender it completely to you. Come into my heart. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Wash me with your blood and make me yours. And I promise you and I pledge to you that I will live for you and I will serve you all the remaining days of my life. Now let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon me to enable me to begin and run this race effectively. Thank you, Lord, because I know you've answered me. I know that my life will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I pray for every one of you that prayed a prayer for restoration in your life if you are backsliding and for the miracle of the new birth, the miracle of regeneration to take place in you. That the old man be taken out of your spirit, your sins be washed away with the blood of Jesus and the blessed experience of eternal life and new birth will become yours. May that miracle, the greatest miracle of all, take place in your life. And may God bless you with the presence and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, empowering you to live for him from now on. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Write us, let us know what God has done for you. Connect with us every Sunday by broadcast and start growing. Find book, a Bible and start reading it and then find a good church and start attending. If there is dominion city where you are, find it and then start attending it and if there is none you can team up with your friend and start one <laughs> start it as a fellowship first meet on sunday evenings or in the week and then gradually gradually you grow glory be to the name of the lord glory be to the name of the lord hmm.